Radio, shout it. Hi, 1079, it's your boy, Beehive Radio, shout it. And stepping in the building, I got my Memphis fam in this thing. Chrome, what's good with it, my dog? What it do, Beehive, man. I am blessed to be here with you, my guy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I mean, Chrome, let's get straight to it, man. Coming up in North Memphis, I mean, break that down for me, man. And no, no, man. Look here. It ain't no lot that I can just really explain about that, man. Because, you know, North Memphis, man, hey, look here. It's just like East Atlanta. It's just like down there. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, now, man, up, you know, man, you just had to just be. You know, just one honey, you know, because if you wasn't, you know, man, and the streets eat you alive down there, man. Facts, facts. Now, early on, you and Lil Shank doing y'all thing, man. I mean, how did y'all boy link up? And what was that like putting out them early underground tapes in Memphis, man? Man, I was like, what, 16, 17 years old, man. We came out with the Murder Mafia tape, man. I'm talking about the first young guys that came out with a tape. Besides the fly. And yeah. They ball them and, you know, they ball them, you know what I'm saying? And, man, those days was just like, was like blessings after blessings, man, you know? Yeah. These are young guys that were just hungry for the music industry, knew what we wanted in life, and, you know, knew what we wanted to accomplish in life, man. Shout out to my little brother, Shank. Things that freed him from out that joint. Yes, they just see my little bro. I love him to death, you know. But besides that, man, hey, it's just normal life down there. I feel that. Now, I mean, early bangers, like baller blockers, get out the way. I mean, talk to me about how that joint came about, man. Man, man. We was dealing with a situation, dealing with uh, dealing with the Loot Chasers, and we had something going on as far as the Shang and Chrome album and the Day Living album. And Ball of Blocks album just really came out when, you know, like, when the music industry was, like, so easy to, like, you know, be somebody in the music industry. But then it was, like, a lot of haters, man, you know, that didn't want to see us being 17, 18 years old, you know, man, so far ahead with our skills and our talent like that. So, you know, a lot of people was Ball of Blocking, man. So we had to tell them to get out the way, man. <laughs> I'm with that now. I mean, then y'all got down with my dog, Player Flyman, on that daily living. Talk to me about getting in there with Flyman. And then, for those that don't understand who a Player Fly is, what did that mean to y'all and to the city? Man, man, Fly is one of the great pioneers, man. I'm talking about, hey, uh, man, crowning me was the hard journey came out with. And then, you know, man, as us being like some young artists that were coming up, and, you know, Fly, Gangsta Black, you know, you know, those guys, you know, was out there doing their thing. And so, you know, we were like, hey, man, let's try to do a song with Player Fly. Yeah. So, you know, we had a show down there off in Memphis down, you know, like, uh, I think it was on Bill Street. And, man, we went to the show, turned the show out. Fly was back there in the back, turned up, crunk. And, you know, we just hollered him, told him, hey, look here, man, you know, man. I want you to get you on this album, man. He was like, hey, you know, man, just let me know. And we mm. made it happen. And came out with the daily living. Yeah. My God. Now, I was just chopping it up with that boy Frazier the other day, man. Can you talk about him and your relationship and how you linked up with that boy Frazier, boy? Okay, now, how this situation happened. Now, let's go back to the part when I was with Lou Chasers, man. You know, daily living, Shane Crone. So, me and my bros, you know, we was working on our album, uh, Daily Living. So, you know, Daily Living came out, and then Shane Crone came out. And then that's when my brother had ended up catching, like, a, a charge, you know, man, ended up catching a murder case, and they gave him, like, 13 years. So I was like, man, damn, you know. It was like a little little uh, bump in the road. I'm like, oh, God. So, you know, man, it was either just spoke or, you know, keep it rolling. So, man, I just kept it rolling, you know, man while my bro was down there locked up. So, you know, then I just brought out this other tape, you know, like the little solo tape, and I did a couple of songs, probably like a little six, six song uh, mm -hmm. tape, and I put it out, and the streets just caught fire to this jump. And mm -hmm. then one song that caught Three Six Mafia, like attention was that uh, uh, Bust Em Up. Yeah. So, you know, 
played that joint in the club. Look, you know, Larry was in that joint. You know, man, he played that joint in the club. Man, the crowd went crazy. Me not knowing Frazier Boy, Crunchy Black, all oh, them was in the club too at the same time. So I guess Frazier and uh, you know, went back with Crunchy Black and told him like, hey, man, it's a young guy named Chrome, you know, man, had man turned the club up. I told him I had some folks in there wild mouth. So a couple weeks passed by, and then it just all unfolded from there. Just all unfolded from there. My head got a call from from uh I think it was DJ Paul and Juicy J. I think they called me like on three way. Nigga, I'm thinking <laughs> on my motherfucking phone. I'm like, man, I swear to God, yeah. I said, man, who the fuck this is playing on my motherfucking phone? If you don't get the fuck out of my phone with this shit. <laughs> and Paul was like, no, man, no, man. This is really DJ Paul, man. I'm like, oh, for real? <laughs> and then he was like, you know, man, hey, you know, man, we want to sign you with Hypnotized Man. So I'm thinking like, okay, cool. You know, so, you know. Ended up, you know, linking up with them, and it's just been, man, it's just been one hell of a ride since then, my baby. <laughs> now getting on that most unknown album, though, man, got it for sale. What was that like? Was that your first song that you had recorded with them, or how did that go? Actually, that that was that was my first song because mm -hmm. when I first signed with them, that's when I came out with the Straight to the Pro album. That mm -hmm. album still hot back to this day, man. I come out, man. I got fans that still listen to that shit. New yeah, fans right. that still on that John Wayne go. So you know, man. I, they saw that I could carry my own weight. Mm -hmm. You know, it was more like, okay, well, hey, you know, man, let's throw them on this most known unknown because they called this white dude from New York, and then you know they brought the white dude in who be listening to some of my music, who be like, you know, telling them like, you know, how far this artist gonna go. Mm -hmm. So. White dude said, man, put him on as many songs as y'all can. So, you know, man, that's when they threw me on the Got It For Sale, <laughs> and they uh, dance on the pole. But then that was after the uh, Straight To The Pro album came out. So, okay. you know, it's just been one hell of a ride once again. <laughs> Straight To The Pros, though, man, putting that album together with a lot of bangers and then being able to go gold with that thing. What was that like getting there? Okay, you got three cents mafia, the hardest producers in the game behind you, Memphis right. hometown. What was that like, man? Man, I'm talking about, to be honest, man, it was just like, you know, just work, 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 you know, and just stay focused. But then, you know, I always remember, Chrome always been had that talent. You yeah. Know? I had them beat with that talent. You feel what I'm saying? Because, you know, hey, I just, Went to California, dropped that joint in a whole month because man, I had a fucking, fucking, fucking tablet full of raps. I tell about man, I was just going through the whole dropping, 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 dropping like a young Tupac or something. I was like, God, <laughs> songs got the song. I tell my look at send me another beat, you know, my kill that joint, and then Juice J coming there do a hook, I kill it. Paula coming there do a hook, I kill it. I tell him about man, man, it was just. Hey, just straight up here. I learned. You and Boogie Man. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about that banger right there. Man, man, look. Once I did that song, I was inside the little uh, writing room. You know, we call it like a little writing room. You know, man, mm -hmm. it wasn't a little writing room. Uh, uh, Paul had came in there, and then Juicy came in there, too. He was like, hey, Crown, listen to the beat. Let me know if you like this junk. And then write something to it. Man, I heard that hook on that motherfucker, boy, I just went in on that motherfucker. I said, I tell him I went completely in on that motherfucker. was like, God damn. I went in on that motherfucker. It was like over, bro. I told him it was over. I told him that same day, right after they brought that beat in there, probably like 30 minutes later, mm -hmm. I was done. Man. I was the microphone. Crazy Mike, we got him recording me. Crazy Mike was like, God damn, man, they boy to kill this junk. Man, I told him, man. Man, I was just doing what, you know, God told me to do, you know. You know, bless me with that talent, then use that talent. So that's what I was doing. Another banger with Scrappy don't get their ass kicked. Talk to oh, me about that joint. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, I talking about, man, be how, boy, we're going to be all day talking about them heads. <laughs> man, shout out to little Scrappy, ATL, man. Talking about for real, man. 
I need to link back up with that boy too, cause man, he see that damn it doing anything too. Yeah. Hey, but look, man, that John right a little scrappy. Whew. Man, I heard that goddamn hook. Shit, man, that motherfucker ends up putting me off in North Memphis, goddamn it, mode, goddamn it, back, back, way, way, way back in the day to the point you know, man, when they came out with the Tutty Club. I, said, right. <laughs> <laughs> I turned up with that motherfucker. I talked about, hey. And man, that was another banker, man. Shout out to Lil Scrappy, shout out to ATL, man. I love y'all down there. Talk to me about the reaction in Memphis when that Straight to the Pros dropped, man. I mean, how was you feeling in your city being with one of the hottest teams in the game? And I mean, just having that hometown love going on. Man, to be honest, man, when Straight to the Pros dropped, it was like, you know, me doing like, you know, so much shit because I was actually working on my next album, Why Straight to the Pros was out there. Yeah. I had was calling my phone saying, Chrome, you on the radio station. So they right there let you know how much I was, you know, constantly working and constantly grinding, trying to, you know, work on the next project to the mm -hmm. point I didn't know she was on the radio station. So man, that's right there just blew my wig. I'm like, God damn, this motherfucker is doing numbers. I right, talking about man, shows was crazy. Man, like crazy, crazy, man. You know, man, I always been a humble artist, so you know. You know, man, I never, you know, got the big head or, you know, felt like, you know, I was better than anybody. But, you know, man, I always felt like, hey, you know, I'm just going to keep pushing forward. And I'm just going to stay focused. I'm just going to keep on doing what I got to do. And just, man, keeping God first. And, you know, man, being loyal to the people that I felt like were loyal to me. That's right. That's right. Now, I mean, the Project Landlord, going into that project, what was your mindset after coming off of going gold, getting ready to go in the key? Oh man, I went in again. That motherfucker went go, go even, even, even after Paul and Juicy them, you know, just just giving me, you know, you know, like mediocre beats at that point in time because you know they were working on what they had going on. But I still killed those mediocre beats, and that motherfucker still selling right now today too. I said, that shit is crazy, man. My I told you, man, basically, uh, to be honest with you, when I came with the project landlord, you know. Like, if you listen to Straight to the Pros and then you go back and listen to Project Landlord, you know, you can sort of kind of tell the difference in the beats, mm. you know, if you really know how Paul and Jason them make beats. So mm. I think this was the, you know, turning point when it was like, well, Chrome feeling some type of way. Of course, I'm feeling some type of way because, you know, y'all didn't do what y'all supposed to have been done on the first album. You feel what I'm saying? But me still being loyal behind you, you feel what I'm saying? Because, man, loyal and being humble. We'll get a nigga far, but sometimes we won't. But, you know, I was young, you know, learning. They had no manager, you know. They was my manager and my producer. And shit, loyal got them, whatever else got them that they need to be. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, man, it was just a learning experience. You feel what I'm saying? A learning experience. But I went in on that motherfucker because then I was really, like, in my feelings. See, the first album, it was more, like, happy and, you know, oh, shit, I'm going to turn up, you know. You know, man. You know, uh, represent the clique. I'm finna turn up on every song, and you know, and you know, it's, you know, and that's basically, basically what I did. Yeah, yeah. She fine with T Pain though, man. That was another one of those. Oh, like, wait, talk oh. to me. Oh man, CV high, CV high. You go, CV high. You about to start something? <laughs> okay, so look here, man. Now the jump we got ever T Pain, man. This right here. How this happened. Like, let's take it back before Project Landlord came out. So uh -huh. after Straight Pros had came out, that's when I didn't like a couple things they was doing. If you notice, I went go without a fucking video. So that's why like a lot of my fans and shit know my music, but they you know, but they can't connect it with a face. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of kind of, you know, rubbed me the wrong way. So I was like, okay, so hey. That's when I was, you know, telling Paul, he was like, hey, look here, man, I need to get some videos, and man, y'all need to start sending me my bread when I need my bread, you feel what I'm saying? So, you know, a couple of altercations happened, so I'm like, okay, cool, forget it. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm, you know, man, I'm totally done with the label. So that's when I went back and then created a, a, a hit song without they beat, and then hmm. threw it on the radio station. That motherfucker took off in Memphis. And then I featured like a couple of my other little friends on it and shit, you know, you know, man, just trying to show them love, you know, man, just try to got them, help them get out there too, because man, I ain't never been no selfish motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying? You know, man, I was 
I was having crumbs and still passing them out. You know, man, trying to help motherfuckers. You feel what I'm saying? Because, you know, man, that's what a real nigga do. That's what a good nigga do with a good heart. You feel what I'm saying? So, long story short, they heard the song blowing up on the radio station behind to my this motherfucker getting spent like 20 times a goddamn day to the point where fucking baby was walking around saying that shit. So, Paul just called me on the phone. They're like, hey, Crown, man, we need to work out our difference. And, you know, man, let's try to go ahead and uh, work on your next album, which is Project Landlord. Mm -hmm. So, me, I'm like, okay. I've been knowing T-Pain way before T-Pain had blew up. And because mm -hmm. me and him used to be inside this club called, uh, damn, damn what's the name of this goddamn strip club down in Austin, Memphis. Because they had to change the name to the giant. Platinum Rose. Me and him used to be in the strip club, Platinum Rose. And so I was like already, you know, blowing up. T-Pain was getting ready to blow up. Mm -hmm. And so me and him was just, you know, being in the strip club, kicking it, talking shit, and, you know, fucking around, you know, doing goddamn what black, black, black men do. Goddamn, spend money, have fun, get a little drunk, talk a little shit. You feel know what I'm saying? And so look, man, I fuck with T-Pain, so... I'm like, okay, if I come back to the label, I want y'all to put T-Pain on the remix. Because now, by then, that's when T-Pain was getting, you know, blowing up. That's when he came out with that, I'm in love with the script. Mm. He was blowing up every fucking word. Mm -hmm. And so me being a young mm -hmm. dude, a man like I am, I'm thinking business. You feel what I'm saying? Because I easily could have went and got anybody for that song. But I'm thinking business, you know. I fuck with T-Pain. I've been knowing him for a while. He's been knowing me for a while. And so I'm like, okay, that'll be the perfect song to you know put him on because he with the rapping and he with the singing. But a lot of people didn't know that T-Pain could rap. They mm -hmm. thought he could just sing. So, yeah. But I could rap. So I hit him up. I'm like, Juicy, Paul, put T-Pain on the remix of the She Fine song with me. They said, okay, cool. So I fly to California. Now we get out there, me and T-Pain in the studio, goddamn it, doing that motherfucker, killing that motherfucker. I tell my T-Pain killed that motherfucker. Shout out to T-Pain too. Shout out to Florida, Tallahassee. You know, man, I fuck with y'all too. Crown got love for everybody. You hear me? And uh, most definitely, I want to link up with T-Pain. Most definitely, I do. But the sad part about it, when I went to California to go do the song with T-Pain, T T-Pain thought I was already rich. T-Pain was like, oh, man, shit, nigga, man, you need to move down the street with me. I'm looking at T-Pain like, nigga, how the fuck am I going to move down the street with you? Nigga, I can't move down the street with your motherfucking dad. <laughs> <laughs> So he thinking I'm rich, just uh -huh. like he rich. He telling me to buy the house next door to him. So you know we can link up. You feel what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And uh, I do remember him telling me, Crone, if things don't work out, we got them, but damn man, you come over and got them hollering that boy. You feel what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, shit, cool. But me, I kept on dealing with Paul them because they told me that they was gonna put T Pain on my album. So I'm looking at like, okay, look, I see where T Pain going at with that situation, but. I'm looking at like, okay, let me secure my bag, man. Let me get you on this song. So therefore, when I do take off and blow up, then nigga, I can buy that house that can go to your motherfucker dad. Then <laughs> we can do it every day all day. I don't give a fuck. You feel what I'm saying? Me, 19, 20 years old, thinking like I'm 30 or 40 years old. You feel what I'm saying? And so this the this the plot twist. Now, they got T Pain on this song. And now my album dropped. So I go to the store, which I didn't have to go do this because I had uh, copies of the album, but I just wanted to support myself. So I went to the store and I went and bought one of my own albums. And I read the goddamn thing, looking for the She Fine song so I could see my nigga on that motherfucker. Oh uh, man, if I had took T-Pain off the song, man, and then tried to lie on T-Pain and say his record label didn't clear it. So, now, you remember T-Pain had the uh, tour with Lil Wayne called I Am Music Tour, right? Mm -hmm. He had a show down there off in uh, Memphis, Tennessee at the, uh, I don't know if that was at the Pyramid or that was at the uh, basketball stadium down there. But anyway, I'm on a tour bus with T-Pain. I'm like, bro, did your uh, label not clear the song? 
He said, Crown Man, my label cleared that song. I'm like, what? So them folks took T Pain verse off that song to not blow me up, man. Like for real, man. Like if you go buy that CD right fucking now, you will not see T Pain featured on that song. But I'm gonna show you how God good is. I'm gonna show you how good God is. I mean, let me correct that because God is good in the mud. So look here, man. Somehow somebody leaked the song on the internet. So that's how they find out that he was on the song after my album came out. And mm -hmm. then if you go back on the internet now, you will hear another song, She Fine, same beat, me on it rapping, T-Pain on it rapping, and Project Pat talking on the intro like it's his song. It's mm -hmm. crazy. This shit is crazy. Answer me this though, Chrome. Where was it that everything went wrong though, man? I'm gonna keep it so real with you, be how I'm gonna keep it so real with you. And this how I feel, and I think this how Memphis feel too. When I did that song Rage in the Projects with Project Pat, mm -hmm. do you remember that jump? I was Rage in the Projects, yeah. Projects. I did that jump, right? Yeah. Once I did that jump, this right here was when Project Pat just not getting ready to come back well, basically come back to let people know who, who he was. But I've been holding it down mm -hmm. while he was gone. You feel what I'm saying? Because I'm a big fan of Project Pat. You feel what I'm saying? You mind talking about, I like Pat music. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? So I was excited like a motherfucker got to get on strong with Pat. Come on now. Huh? I said, come on, I'm with you. Right. And so, man, I'm super goddamn excited to get on this song with Project Pat. So I get on the song with Project Pat, no disrespect to Pat, no disrespect to none of them. The streets in Hot 107.1 said I killed that man on his own song. You feel what I'm saying? And a lot of people say that right to this day, right to this day. It didn't come out of my mouth. I wasn't going around telling people that I killed Project Pat on his own song. This, this right here is what the streets and the critics were saying. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so after that happened, the song got put out on I want no Sam. He's blowing up. Everybody requesting that motherfucker. People loving that motherfucker. Everybody eating it up, right? So now they shoot the video. It's me being loyal and humble once again. Be high. Look, they shoot the video to the Reds and Project song. Take my take my verse off. Have Pat write a second verse to the song. Shoot the video for it, and then give me a two second cameo in the video. Then they try to go take that same song to Hot 107. My Hot 107 said, we ain't playing that shit. We keep playing the same one that got, them that got Chrome on it. That's the one we like. We don't like that shit got them that Pat just put out right there. No, we don't like that. We like the one with him and Pat on it, not with just Pat on it. Mm -hmm. And they got mad, mm -hmm. man. That, that's what I feel. Mm -hmm. See, I feel like they was mad because I was, you know, I was the type of artist got them that was going to speak up about my money because I got it. that's how I was raised. And I don't give a fuck. If you do got a million dollars, you know, because if you're real, you real. You feel what I'm saying? I'm going to be loyal to you as long as you're loyal to me. You feel what I'm saying? I'm going to respect you as a man as long as you respect me as a man. So a lot of artists, you know, man, was, you know, was actually afraid to, you know, talk to the nigga. Man, look, I'm from Scudderfield. I'm from the motherfucking project, man. Motherfuckers knew, knew what the fuck it was way before they even signed Crown Men away. Like, for real. I'm going to speak my motherfucking mind. I ain't going to be no hush, hush ass nigga. And you hear, I like y'all music, but I never was a fan of y'all music. See, a lot of them niggas was a fan of them niggas music. White is a fan of them niggas music. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You hear me? I, you, know, I, you know, I like your music, but I'm not a fan of your music. Probably like I'm an artist. I really like the West Pet. You feel what I'm saying? And that's how I looked at it. You feel what I'm saying? Crunchy Black, you know, I <laughs> listen to his music. You feel what I'm saying? But I, me personally, like the Pet because of how his style and his flow. And you know how he used that catchy, catchy style flow. You feel what I'm saying? So it was like after that shit happened, man, everything just went left field, man. Everything just went left field. But I feel like they was already mad at me because I wanted to leave Africa straight to the pro. Mm. You feel mm. what I'm saying? Because they didn't give me no promotion. They gave me, man, eh, look, you know, just probably like a little bit promotion, but it wasn't that type of promotion like how they was putting behind their shit. Because mm -hmm. if you notice, how can an artist go go behind with mm -hmm. no fucking video, man? 
Mm. How's that possible? Especially back in those days. You feel what I'm saying? That mean I had to been hot than a motherfucker. And then listen to this. I wanted to do a song with Lil Boosie. They tell me, oh, no, you can't do a song with Lil Boosie. That's your competition. Man, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm not in no competition with nobody. I'm trying to eat, nigga. I'm trying to connect with these artists I heard. You feel what I'm saying? Then I tried to do a song with, uh, uh, what's the guy who I would be saying his name? Mike Jones. Mm. They didn't want me to do no songs with no artists because they were using me as the shooter that's going to gun down every artist that tried to come and attack them. You feel what I'm saying? They even tried to get me to go at Dottie. You feel what I'm saying? It's like, come on, man. Like, damn. Look, I'm trying to eat, nigga. I'm trying to eat, nigga. I don't got time for all that old beef shit, man. I'm a young nigga that's trying to eat, man. Like, for real, man. They ain't been put me on no front line. And then, you know, man, have all these artists mad and the motherfucker at me thinking I'm going at their head. You hear me? Now, I'm loyal, you know, you know, to the situation, but I'm not going to be loyal to a situation that's not helping me get paid. I got kids, too. You feel what I'm saying? I got kids, too. You hear me? I got a mama. You feel what I'm saying? You know, man, I got brothers and sisters and shit, you know, man, who deserve to, you know, not work in life just as well as y'all got family, you know, that deserve not to work in life, you know? So, it's, you know, man, that's what I feel like. I feel like things went to, you know, went left field after the fact. Mm -hmm. After that song came out and before I did that song with Pat, they was like, oh, Crown read the lead. Mm -hmm. Why not, nigga? I should fucking leave. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no promotion. Nigga, I got to call you, nigga, to goddamn it. Get my money, you know, that I supposed to be getting. You feel me? You hear me? I shouldn't have to call no another man and then, you know, ask no man, goddamn, hey, bro, my motherfucking rent, dude, because y'all going to send me my check. And see, I was doing it at first because I was trying to be respectful. But then it got to the point, like, man, look here, man, fuck that shit. Man, where the fuck is my motherfucking money at? Like, big facts. You feel what I'm saying? And so I guess they felt like, okay, we got them, you know, we can't control him the way we can control everybody else. Because ain't no nigga in the world finna sit up here and, you know, have me keep calling you about something that you owe me. You feel what I'm saying? It ain't like I'm asking you for something free. I never asked for no offer. I ain't asked for no anything. You feel what I'm saying? You hear me? I didn't ask for shit free, but my money that you owe me, that my album selling. Mm. Facts. After you left, man, what was your life like after parting ways and going independent? Man, to be honest with you, I looked at it like this. Like, I knew it was going to be like a lot of fuck shit mm -hmm. because I left. Because even like a couple of artists that was still with the label was acting funny towards me. You feel what I'm saying? Now, that what you call mind control or you call just some straight fuck boy or some straight fake ass shit. Because I tried to contact Fraser, white, crunchy black. You hear me? Mm. One of them niggas was still, goddamn it, you know, kicking it with them folks. Man, what no motherfucker getting back with me? You hear me? White, right to this day, will not say a word to me. Period. Period. Mm. Period. And then crunchy black, after he left, me and him was talking, you feel what I'm saying? Because I was down there off in Vegas, you know. How let some people got him about this little record deal, you know, man, who was about to give us a record deal, including him too. You hear me? You know, we had these people who had uh invented this fucking uh what's that shit? You know, people be smoking, but it's not real weed. But these are the people who invented that shit. You feel what I'm saying? And so, man, they was about to throw some money behind me and black. And so that was the only time me and black, you know, had you know words and you know conversated. And but then that situation didn't go through because we had too many people with their hand in the hand in the pot and didn't know what the fuck they was doing. So, you know, I just walked away from that. And then that's when I ran across Sleepy Brown off in Vegas. He was trying to sign me to this label called 13 Black mm -hmm. Records. But you know, they was like a, a rock slash uh rap rap band. You feel what I'm saying? So only reason why I didn't take that off is shout out to Sleepy Brown, you know man, I fuck with you too. Much love to that dude. <clears throat> and the reason why I didn't take that off because I was sort of kind of like, hey, you know, I don't want my fans to get confused about what I've been putting out. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Because it looked crazy, me making all this gangster rap music, then all of a sudden I'm rapping on a rock beat 
Motherfucker gonna be like, what the fuck Chrome got going on? You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, man, I ain't wanna, you know, take that, you know, move. But hey, look here, shout out to Sleepy Brown. You know, no hard feelings, my brother. You know, but you know, man, I was just looking out for the best interest of my career. You feel what I'm saying? So, ever since then, man, I just been paving the way for myself and, you know, man, trying to, you know, get my name back out there. But I really feel like motherfucker Slick trying to throw dirt on my name because. A lot of my fans, since they ain't heard from me in a while, it's easy for somebody to, to, you know, paint a picture about a person if you're not talking up for yourself when you're not in the scene. Do that make sense? No, I feel you. And so, you know, man, like a lot of people thought maybe I was locked up. When my motherfucker said I OD on drugs, my father, I don't do no drugs, bitch. All I do is smoke some good weed. And my super little serve every now and then. But nigga, man, look, I am not on no hard fucking drugs. I don't <laughs> You know, shit like that. Because, hey, 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 look, I got all my teeth. And all of these are dying. I got all my teeth. Now, a couple of my niggas who really do do drugs, all they shit gone. Now, that's the difference between the motherfuckers who do drugs and the motherfuckers who don't do drugs. Fuck yeah. you, man. And so, you know, man, you know, man, it is what it is, you know? Well, see, so, I always got to ask this, though, Chrome. With time healing all wombs, would there be a chance for reconciliation and getting back with them boys to make more music or something like that, though. And have you spoken to them since? That's the crazy part about it. This right here is so crazy to be happy. You know, man, like, a couple of my fans going right on Paul page and be like, hey, man, what happened to Chrome? You know, man, bring Chrome back out. You know, he'll look over the message. You know, he won't say nothing about it. But then one dude on this page said, hey, man, where Chrome? And he got to say, hey, man, Chrome up in Las Vegas. Man, I'm not in no Las Vegas, man. Don't act like you be coming say with me like that. Cause man, bro, my hair from you niggas in years, man. Years and years and years. And I know you see me on Instagram because I got a blue check just like you got a blue check. So, you know, people people who got blue checks, we stay at the top of the V line. Mm. Top of the top of the search engine every time. So you can type in C H R O and I'm pulling up. Then you gotta put my whole name in there. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So and when they did try to do the hypnotized mind thing, this really, really pissed me off because it's like, how you gonna do a hypnotized mind reunion without even coming to get Chrome or even Fraser? You feel what I'm saying? We bought hypnotized mind too. And so you mean tell me you finna put white project pack, uh, uh, look chat. Like, come on, that ain't hypnotized mind. You mm. feel what I'm saying? And that's why it didn't happen. That's why, that's why the hypnotized mind tour didn't happen. That's the reason why. You know, the hypnotized uh, album or, you know, whatever they call themselves trying to put together. Like, come on. What the hell you going to leave out one of the main niggas that damn near helped build motherfucking hypnotized man. I took my life for real, for real. Capital Records offered me $2 million. I flew down to Capital Records, bro. They offered me $2 million. Right hand to God, man. You hear me? Paul and Juicy and them told me, no, bro, we ain't going to take the $2 million because we can make more than that independently. I'm like, okay. Me being loyal again, you hear me, humble again. Well, okay, well, she got to say no more. So we so we turned down a $2 million from Capital Records just so they can make that $2 million plus some more and put it in their pocket. Of course, they was right. They was, <laughs> them motherfuckers sure were right. We can make more than $2 million. Yeah, meaning him and Juicy J, Paul and Juicy can make more. You feel what I'm saying? I'm thinking they saying we far as we as me, Paul and, and fucking Juicy J. Daddy, motherfucker. I feel your pain. Damn. Like, what, what, what? <laughs> Shit. So, Shit. going so, forward. Say it's a cold game out here. And so, you know, man, nothing to three cents might be a fan or nothing like that, but I will say this. I respect nobody that's a three six mafia fan that respect a motherfucker that would do somebody that type of way. Because that means, for one, you ain't got a good heart and you ain't real and you fake as fuck. So if you're cool with somebody that's fake as fuck, then that makes you fake as fuck. Like, uh, for real. Now, moving forward, though, Chrome. What you got coming down the pipe now? What you working on, my dog? Because I know you're getting biz out here. Yeah, man. I'm working on my new album. 
Picasso. I'm working on that right now, you know. But the pandemic, you know, man, it slowed me down a little bit because, you know, I ain't trying to catch that COVID-19 shit. Man, shout out to everybody got in this out there staying safe in Atlanta. Shout out to everybody staying safe all around the world. This shit is serious out here. And, man, rest in peace, George Floyd, man, fucked up. Boy, I'm glad, yeah. man, man. And I'm glad that we, you know, taking it, taking our time to, like, open our eyes up to what's been going on way before I was born, way before anybody Born. You feel what I'm saying? But hey, this the big question. Is this shit really gonna change? You feel what I'm saying? But I'm working on my album, Picasso. Man, y'all better look out for that shit. I'm trying to give me some features on that jump. If y'all wanna jump on that, just let me know. If you don't, that's cool too, because I always remember Chrome always held his own weight. And hey, look here, and I ain't got no handout looking for no handout from nobody. So if you fuck with me, you fuck with me. If you don't, you don't. I respect that. And it is what it is. I can definitely dig it. And how can they contact you again, my dog? Man, look, y'all can contact me on Instagram. I don't just really be on Facebook like that because that shit very stressful. Like, man, I hate going on Facebook. Like, Niggas from the timeline be like, God damn, they, man, everybody on this motherfucker, <laughs> man, about something. <laughs> about something. They're like, no. So follow me on Instagram, man, at Chrome Corleone, man. Y'all keep in touch with me at Chrome Corleone. Most of you know me by Look Chrome. I had to change my name. Not because they tried to take my name. I ain't said nothing about that, but, you know, nigga tried to actually do a Tina Turner type, type shit on me as far as my name. Like, man, you can't leave with your name. Nigga, I came with that name. What the fuck you mean, nigga? But I got tired of being look prone because I'm no longer a, 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 a child no more. You feel what I'm saying? You know, you know, man, as a nigga grow up, nigga put away childish things and right. then become a man. So that's the reason why my name is Chrome Corleone, like the Mafia, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not that mafia, like the real mafia. You feel what I'm saying? You hear me? No uh, motherfucking funny shit, like for real. No funny shit, like for real. So, man, y'all follow me on Instagram at Crown Coleon. I talk about, man, y'all connect with me. I ain't like the other artists, goddamn it, you know, man, who ain't gonna respond back. I'm, I'm gonna respond back. I'm gonna talk to you. I'll let you all that shit, like for real, man. Because I look at it like this. It ain't no big eyes and no little use with me. You know, man, if you're on your shit and you focus on trying to get, get somewhere in life and you want to do some music with me, hit me up, man. Don't be afraid to hit me up. I ain't going to be like the other artists got at me. Y'all be writing a thousand comments, motherfuckers. They be reading y'all shit. <clears throat> y'all be in the inbox talking about a feature. Niggas be looking at your shit and then swipe back and make that bitch unread again. I talk about that type of shit. I don't do that type of shit, man. Like for real, man. Y'all holler at me, get at me. Speak with you, speak your mind, say what say what you want to say. You want to curse me out, I'm gonna curse your motherfucking ass back out. That was the type of thing I am. I'm a real motherfucking nigga like and it is what it is. Fuck you talking about. <laughs> I can dig it. Well, Crow, appreciate you checking in, my dog, man. Man, look here, man. I thank you, be I swear, man. The world needs to know what's going on, man. And hey, look, I don't got no problem with nobody unless they got problem with me. And hey, look here. And and if they did want to do some music with me, hey, look here. This time, we're going to make sure we had that paper right. So all the artists out there, man, make sure y'all get y'all paperwork right. Make sure y'all got them get y'all a fucking lawyer. And make sure you get you a manager that you can trust. Like, for real, for real. Because this shit is real crazy out there. And it's fucking sad that, you know, niggas can rob your ass with a pen. Like, seriously, Rob Red the devil with a fucking pen. Black, blue, red, whatever pen he used, they can rob your motherfucking ass with a pen. So you better open your ass a little bit out of that time. <laughs> 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 you gotta land at this shit. I swear to God, man, you gotta I land I feel you, though. I feel you. <laughs> keep, keep a motherfucking straight mind, man. Yeah. Like, for real, you hear me? You know how I feel towards them niggas, man? Look here, man. It was a lesson learned, you know? You know, man, they... Got me known, but I don't say they got me known like that because Chrome could have been bigger than that. You feel what I'm saying? If I would have chose to go the route that I chose to go, and that mm -hmm. should have been the route, you know, how I was already blowing up and not even included them mm -hmm. in the situation. But, hey, you know, it is what it is, you know, man. I just thank God, you know, man, that I still got my life today. I thank God I got some beautiful kids, and I thank God, you know, I still got the will to go and like all that. So, hey. Man, y'all follow me on Instagram. Y'all fuck with the boy. Man, y'all fuck with the kid. Man, y'all know what it is. You hear me? Real street nigga. I tell me, I know motherfucking funny shit. But none of that shit. Like, for real, for real. Yeah. My dog, salute, salute, salute. And I'm going to catch y'all here, Crow.
Yes, sir. Halo.